Hi, it's Mark Carrier. I'm uh, here to speak to you today about uh, some basics uh, with testing. Probably the most underutilized aspect of direct marketing is in testing all the elements of a direct marketing campaign. It's surprising because through testing different media sources, lists, creative executions, offers, and call to actions, you can systematically improve your response to find that sweet spot to deliver the best cost of sale and profit. Testing provides you with valuable information or performance learnings to help you make informed decisions prior to rolling out your campaign. And testing takes the guesswork out of your campaign, so why wouldn't you do it? To get the best ROI, you need to optimize the performance of your campaigns to understand which elements of the campaign can be improved. You know, media selection, list selection, creative execution, offers, and call to action. You can only make informed decisions regarding any of these campaign elements provided you measure their performance. By tracking all these elements, you'll be able to identify which areas need to be optimized to increase response, reduce cost per uh, response, or increase sales conversion rates to deliver a better cost of sales and more profit. So when testing different elements within a campaign, you need to consider a few basics. Number one, campaign reporting. You need to create a campaign report that covers all the metrics to track results. You can't expect what you don't inspect, and you can't inspect what you don't measure and track. Number two, split test or sell test. There are a number of ways you can test different elements within your campaign. You know, for example, you could either split test, you know, often called an A-B test, by having two separate communications go out with, with different offers to see which offer gets you more response, and a better cost of sale. Or you can have uh, a sell test where you have a number of different offers or a combination of lists, offers, or call to actions, all of which you can test against each other to find out which one has the best uh, response for you and the best profit uh, response for you. Test group size. Well, when testing any element within your campaign, you need to ensure that the results you achieve uh, through your test cells are statistically valid. The size of your test cells are really going to be determined by the size of your universe. If you have a smaller universe, you'll need to be careful that the sizes of your test cells aren't too small to render the test outcomes inconclusive. With a much larger universe to play with, uh, you, ha you have the luxury of fine-tuning the campaigns uh, first to find your control pace, you know, what I call the sweet spot. And with a larger universe to play with, you can select up to 10% of the universe for tests to find that sweet spot before rolling out to the rest of your universe. Generally speaking, you know, in the case of uh, direct mail, for instance, uh, I wouldn't test anything less than 5,000 records. Um, you know, considering typical response rates, anything less wouldn't provide enough responders to provide any real performance learnings. When you think about test sizes for telemarketing, they can be much less, you know, and, and I find that when I'm testing a new script, 250 presentations is a good number to uh, get good learnings. And when I mean presentations, I mean that's, you know, starting from the start to the finish of the uh, script. Not just, hi, it's Mark, and they hang up. I wouldn't call that a presentation. And do the test with just a few good callers so there is consistency in the delivery of the script, okay? Point four would be random selection. You know, another important element to consider is how you select the records for your cells. To ensure your uh, testing as scientifically as possible, be sure to use a random selection method when selecting the number of records for each test cell. For example, uh, if you want to test uh, different offers in a 5,000 cell head-to-head -head test, A-B split test, don't just select the first 5,000 records for cell 1 and then the next 5,000 records for cell 2. Be sure to randomly select your records from alternate rows within your database. What this means is that you'd start with record 1 for cell 1 and then you'd select every eighth record thereafter until you reach your sample size for cell 1. For cell 2, you'd use the same process but would start with record 2. Selecting your records for the test cells this way ensures that you are taking a random selection throughout your entire database that provides, uh, you know, for a representative sample of the whole file. Number five, campaign codes. Uh, whenever you test any element within your campaigns, be sure you assign a separate campaign code every time. You need to have a separate campaign code for each test to make it easier for you to compare the results between each of the test cells. You want to be able to compare each test on a head-to-head -head basis. 
Now, comparing the results this way will usually take any emotional bias out of your consideration and sometimes you'll find some interesting learnings in a losing cell that you might be able to test again against your control. Number six, last thing, go with the winner. Sometimes you find that the results of your tests uh, may surprise you. You know, for instance, the winning cell isn't the one you or your team uh, thought would be the winner. You know, it's happened to me many times. You know, early on in my career, I wouldn't trust the results, would try again with what I thought was the best overall cell as my control. And guess what? I was wrong. Be careful you don't fall into this trap. You know, if you've set up your test cells correctly, then you should trust the results of the outcome of the test. Basically, the winner is your customer telling you what the right combination of medium, lists, copy, creative execution, offers, and call to action they prefer. It's not about you or what you think should be the winner in a test. Let the numbers make the decision for you. Thanks for your time. I hope you found this useful. Any of the uh, templates that I've uh, displayed, budget templates and things like that, uh, they're all available on my blog, so I invite you to go there and you can download them from my blog or find a link to them, and you can reach that at www.whatsaleadworth.com or uh, simply send me an email if you're on LinkedIn. You'll find me there, Mark Carrier, M-A-R-C-C-A-R-R-I-E-R-E. -R -R -E. Good luck and have fun. Bye-bye.